This is what I would do if I could start all over with my video editing journey. For reference, me and my team generated over 50 million short form video views as well as contributed to over a million views on a long form content. But what's more important, I was actually able to make money and sign clients of the video editing projects. Which at the end of the day, we all wanted, right? If you are just starting video editing journey, in this video I have 5 tips for you that can literally level up your game. So let's start with the tip number 1. In the majority of cases, what actually catches people's attention is not like all those cool effects, it's actually the hook of the video. People are watching those videos not because some crazy explosion or whatever else, right? People are watching because of the retention tricks, because of the psychological tricks behind the video. Let me show you two quick examples for you. Here is an interesting fact about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hear me out. Or there is one thing about Arnold Schwarzenegger that nobody knows. Which one do you think will hook more people's attention? Instead of jumping from software to software and trying to learn the latest and the greatest tricks, I would rather focus on learning the craft and getting into nitty gritty of all of that stuff. Specifically, studying how to make people click on the video in the first place, how to make them watch the video, and how to keep them satisfied after the video is done and make them return to the next video. One of the best resources that can help you with that is former Logan Paul editor Hiller Smith. Super cool guy, I learned so much from him and check out his channel, I'll leave it in the description as well. I cannot tell you how many people DM'd me or my clients with the request to become our video editors. And then I go to check their profiles and their edits look like this. Now, there is that misconception that you need to have clients or some like previous work to showcase your portfolio. You do not. If you want to showcase your work and add it to your portfolio, first learn some basics of editing and practice it a little bit. Then you can grab actually uncut podcasts from YouTube, there are millions of them, and make a few short form videos out of it or even a long form video. What you can do after that, you can actually email those pieces of content to the creators and hosts of that podcast and basically tell them, hey, check out what I did for you. Do you guys want me to make more for you? In the worst case, you can still add it to your portfolio and showcase it to other people. Quick bonus tip that I didn't realize when I first started to edit videos. The quality of your content will highly depend on the quality of the assets you are using. If you just want to use regular Premiere Pro transitions, you're gonna be limited to the creative choices you have. That being said, if there's one investment you want to make, consider one of the assets libraries. I would go with a highly trusted one and I personally use Motion Array. Unlimited royalty-free stock assets. You literally have everything starting from templates and presets to different stock videos and photos. And my favorite plugins and huge variety of them Motion Array has. Like check out this film damage or zoom blur effect. Ah, I love it. If you want to think about it, I have $50 off discount for you on the Motion Array annual plan. Check out the very first link in the description and I'll probably also pin it in the comment. And let's get back to the video. Next big question, short form or long form content? What should you edit? Honestly, it's hard to say. You can obviously try to do both, but both of those things have different skill sets and if you try to do it from the start, it can be a little bit overwhelming. That being said, depending on a niche and what market you want to serve, try to think if they need more long-form content and short-form content, and then you can make a business decision. Which brings us to another important thing try to focus on the niche. Now, it doesn't mean that you are limiting your creativity. If you are editing gaming videos, you still can edit vlog videos, right? But let's imagine the situation and put yourself in the shoes of potential person you are reaching out to. Let's say that you want to reach out to the travel creator. That travel creator is getting a DM from you, hey, I want to be your video editor, here are some examples of my work. And all there is is just some gaming stuff from Minecraft. That travel editor are probably gonna think what the heck and they not even gonna know what Minecraft is. However, on the other hand, if you are editing gaming videos and want to target gaming creators, you can actually reach out to them and say, hey, look, I edited this game for this gaming creator. We can literally do the same for you and I already have experience in this niche. Sounds way more trustworthy, right? Now, how do you know what niche to go with? Only you're gonna answer yourself this question and it's all gonna depend on the interest you have. What I would suggest you to do, just to sit down in front of the blank piece of paper and write down the things you're curious about. It's always easier to work with the content that you understand or just go to Google and type popular niches in YouTube. 
The good thing about video editing, you do not need to take classes to learn it. However, the best thing about video editing is if you want to learn it, there are millions of different free resources available to you. I would recommend just picking some high quality creators out there and learning from them. Just literally watching all of their videos or like, you know, the majority of their videos that you are interested in and seeing how and why and what they're doing. And the next cool thing you can do, you can shift your mindset from the consumer to creator. What does it mean? Well, next time you are having lunch and watching some YouTube on a TV or laying in bed or watching YouTube on iPad, try to watch the video, but rather than just watching, try to absorb it. If you click in the video, ask yourself mentally, why did I click on this video? What caught my attention? And then if you're watching this video past 30 seconds, try to ask yourself a question. What keeps me watching this video? What hooks and retention tricks is that creator uses? All of this stuff will accumulate and help you in the long run. Last but not least, you can be the best video editor in the world. But if you don't understand how to offer your services and how to sell them, it would not matter because you would not have anybody to edit the videos for. And how to do all of that business side properly, it's completely different thing. If you want to edit content for businesses, they most likely will not care that much what transitions you are using or even how many views they're gonna get. All they're gonna care about is what this video is gonna do for their business, how it can help them grow. On the other hand, if you're editing for creators, they might just care about the pure volume of content, how much more content can they put out. If there's one suggestion I can give you regarding business side of content creation, try to think about why would other people need your services. If I'm a Ferrari salesman, I might have the best literally the best car in the world, so I might be the best editor in the world, but what would it matter to the person who doesn't even have a driving license? What I'm saying is it's crucial to understand what people need your services and why do they need your services. Then you can craft your offer around this and provide the good service. All right, there you have it. These were five things that I would personally do if I would start video editing again. I mean, I'm still doing those things. Hopefully you learned something cool from this video. I'm posting a lot of stuff about videography and video editing, so make sure to subscribe for more of that content. And if you found this video useful, leave a like. I'll See you in the next one.